for our second episode of Alma Matters. Temple and LaSalle are back with us again for our sample episode. You saw what happened last time. Temple got the best of LaSalle, but today's a new day. New players. We have team captains. We're here. We're going to do it. We're going to bring out LaSalle first. So without any further ado, LaSalle Explorers, let's see what you got. Good luck, but we got to bring out your opponents now, too. So, all the way from Broad Street, we have the cherry and white fight, fight, fight. Temple Owls! Woo! Jesus. Woo! Woo! Let's go, baby. Yeah. Let's go, Temple. With team captain Brian Schwartz, who's also one of our producers. He's got the mug, he's all ready. And our other team captain for LaSalle is working the floor today, uh, Steve McNally. So, we're ready, we're set. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come on. Remember, Temple won last time, just saying, but you know. That's right. So we have to go over the rules first before they see who the better of the two is. Each team will be behind three containers at opposite ends of the stage. The first player in line will shoot one ball in an attempt to land it in one of the baskets. If they do that, the basket is removed. If not, they go back to the end of the line and the other team takes a shot. They'll keep alternating until each team has sunk or one of the teams has sunk one, all three baskets, but the first to do so wins 100 points. So, are we ready? Yeah! Good. Woo! Woo! Do it. Woo! Ladies first. LaSalle, you'll go first. Ready, set, do it! Temple. Owls! 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 We're coming after you! Come on now! Come on with that! This girl has a great voice and some pretty cool hair. You'll see what I mean in a second. Her friends call her Nikki, but she goes by Child Savage on the stage. St. Joe's has been writing songs since middle school. See all her stuff at childsavage.bandcamp.com.
How are you doing today? I'm great. How are, are you? you? All right. Are you, are you ready to play one of our alma mater's games? I think so. Okay. Have you ever been to a tailgate before? No. <laughs> no? Well, we're going to bring you to a tailgate right now. This is what we're going to do. This is has this part of this tailgate in, has two parts. Here, I'm going to try and demonstrate this one. Hold, hold on to that, please. Okay. What I want you to do is put your head down on the dizzy back and spin around five times. I'm not going to do it because <laughs> I have to commentate this game. <laughs> But spin around five times, and then right after I say five, I'm going to count you down, or up. I'm going to count you up, and as soon as I say five, just drop the bat and go over here behind the bean bags. And what you want to do is try to get one in the hole, just like that, or on the board. Okay. Now, with eight bags, how many do you think you can either get on the board or in the hole? One. One? <laughs> Well, I got, I got one. Come on, you gotta have more faith in yourself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna predict three. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, let's see. All right, you think it's gonna be one? I think it's gonna be three. Let's see, audience, cheer her on. On your mark, get set. You don't look like you're ready. On your mark, get set, go! Spin around, come on! One, two, three, four, five! All right, one at a time, there you go, that's one! And okay, that's all right, still got plenty more. And you got two now! Is that three? Two in the hole, one on the board, two on the board, two in the hole. Or excuse me, there's two more. And look at that. Look what you did. You said you were only going to get one. Look at that. You got four on the board. You got two in the hole. What do you think? Uh, always keep your expectations low. Always keep your ex Remember that, folks. Always keep your expectations low. <laughs> Thank you so much. Did, did you have a good time playing this? Yeah, definitely. Would you recommend it to anybody? Not before singing. Not before singing. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We'll see you in just a minute for more t Alma Matters. After one, LaSalle's already up 100 nothing. So they're already at a good start compared to last time when they lost to Temple. So we're, they're on the right track. We're going to meet some of those players now. So let me welcome you first to Flo from LaSalle. <laughs> Doing a little dance for us too, whatever. Which is fitting because, in a way, you do hot yoga. So that's a little movement. Why don't you tell us about um, how you started hot yoga and what constitutes a passion for hot yoga because that's I heard you have a passion for hot yoga oh yeah I love it I actually started last semester with my old roommate last year she literally like, was like you want to come do yoga with me I'm like sure I need something to relax me so we've been going for a couple days and turned going to 6 a.m. in the morning and then going right afternoon so okay literally, it basically like just like puts me in a comfort zone I've been going ever since. Um, so, if, if how long do you think it would take to teach me how to do hot yoga? It depends. Maybe like a month. Or it depends. <laughs> wait, on wait, wait, wait! <laughs> you're looking at my body and you're saying a month. <laughs> it depends on how you go. Like, so. Do we need to find somebody that would take a couple of weeks and you can compare them to me? Like two yeah. weeks and like. And you go every day, maybe like I, twice a day. I, I, don't, I don't. So, are you asking me to go or not? Oh. You want to come? <laughs> maybe we should just go to Natalie instead. Uh, <laughs> Natalie, um, if you could pass the mic to Natalie, please. Hi, Natalie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, after hot yoga one day, we can maybe go to the Renaissance Fair? <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. So, so if you were taking me to the Renaissance Fair, what's the first thing we would do together? Um, well, we 
we would probably go get a turkey leg. Okay. And then go to a show. Can we do the jousting thing? Um, we couldn't do the jousting thing, but we could watch other people do it. Okay. I mean, I guess so. That's fine. <laughs> um, would you bring your dogs? Because I know you have a passion for dogs. Yeah. How many do you have, first of all? Um, well, my parents have one dog, but he's enough dogs <laughs> to, for many. <laughs> he literally eats our entire house. He rules my parents' life. <laughs> His name is Gunther. Okay. okay, but you have to explain to me, how does somebody even, for those I didn't even say, she um, works at the Renaissance Fair, um, or did work at the Renaissance Fair. How does somebody even apply to be, like I feel like there's no job listing for Renaissance Fair. Like what is the resume that you send in for that? Um, so actually they have like a hiring day where you go in and you get hired, but I actually just knew girls that lived on my street that worked there. So I just went with them and I was hired. I worked there for three summers. You have to wear the entire outfit, like you have to speak in old English. Would it be possible to do hot yoga in that outfit? <laughs> uh, you could. It would be really, really hot though. <laughs> okay. I just, I just wanted to check. I mean, it's a possibility, but all right, cool. So uh, after we go to the Renaissance Fair, I think it's fair to say that maybe we could do some karate with Sam. Is that possible? Yes? No? Can we bring I her in? Yeah. All right, let's bring her in. Let's bring her in. Let's just make sure. Um, so you are a black belt. Are you going to show us something or not? Um, can you show us something? I think I can. I didn't stretch, but I think I can do okay, it. Okay, so do you, all right, so can we do this? All right. All right, so now. Um, that must be all the Chobani yogurt that goes into that. Because there's something here about Chobani yogurt as well that my producers gave me. What is your passion for Chobani yogurt? Um, tastes really good. I call myself a Chobani connoisseur. And what makes you a connoisseur of Chobani? I've tried uh, pretty much all the flavors. Peach is the best. All right, so why don't you do me a favor, and off the top of your head, look into camera two right there, and do your best commercial for Chobani yogurt. If you were to be getting paid to talk for Chobani yogurt and sell it to everybody, what would you say? Right there, go ahead. Ten seconds. All right, well, Chobani yogurt has a great amount of protein, and it tastes really good, and you can put almonds in it to increase the protein, and you'll have a great day if you eat, eat it. Okay. All right. We're good. No, we're good. I mean, uh, you can't guarantee you a black belt, but you know, it's, it's whatever. So we just met LaSalle. They're winning, just to remind you, 100 nothing. So now we have Temple's turn to introduce themselves and explain why they are here to take it home for Temple. Let's meet the contestants. First, we have Max, who you might notice. We, if, we, if we like you, we invite you back. Um, my, Max was in one of our um, videos for um, introducing himself and why he went to Temple and that kind of thing. So you might have seen him there. So Max, but what you didn't talk about in your video was how you broke your wrist in the same spot three times. Right. How is that even possible? I broke my wrist three different spots, three different ways. First was skateboarding, second was snowboarding, okay. third was playing football. Pick one and expand on it. I was snowboarding and I was going through the woods. Somebody had uh, crossed off private property, so they put a rope in the middle of the trail. Yeah. And I attempted to duck the rope in the middle of the trail and fell back and snapped my left wrist. Hey, so, karate chick, can you break his wrist the fourth time or no? <laughs> no, no? No, okay, all right. Well, maybe we can do that later. Um, so, uh, do you, um, have you played football before? Like yeah, in high school football. and stuff? I played football in high school. Okay, cool. What position? For you. Cornerback. Cornerback. Who's your favorite player in the league right now? In the league right now? Anybody. Carson Wentz. Oh, there you go. A little hometown. Yeah, yep. Okay. okay, cool. Um, so, what makes you a big coffee guy and a big family guy enthusiast? Oh, right. So, I'm a big coffee guy, even bigger family guy. I'm new okay. to the coffee game. Okay. Really. okay. Real new to the coffee game, I'm still on my instant coffee mix. I boil water and then I put my coffee in there. So okay. I'm still on my basics. We step. can do that as a separate video if you want. Fair enough. All I right, can yeah, teach y'all yeah. how to make coffee. All right, all right. And then uh, big family guy, always been a big family guy. Love my family, mom, dad, and my sisters. Do you want to come with us to hot yoga or no? Uh, I can do hot yoga. I I'll just, bring uh, my family uh, and my coffee And the coffee, coffee right, well. yeah. and the family. All right, good. All right, cool. Thanks, Max. Yeah, great. All right, so Tyler, why don't you come on in and... So... This is kind of funny because is your uncle's a Philly fanatic? Yeah, he is. As in the real, that's in the main Philly fanatic? Yeah, like, yeah, the real, on my mom's side, my mom's, he's the actual fanatic. As in Tom? Yeah, Tom Burgoyne. Yeah, yeah, no, I know him because I, yeah, yeah. That's the guy. So, okay, I just wanted to see if it was, because I know there's a couple yeah. different fanatics, but, um, so what does that mean for Tyler with his uncle being the Philly fanatic? Um, just a lot of cool experiences through Tom, um, like growing up, going to all the fanatic days and stuff like that as a kid, you know what I mean? Going up, seeing his locker room, he always had a costume at the house. Right. So. Have you ever tried on the costume? Yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty smelly. It's pretty it smelly? Yeah, it smells really bad. Like, what does it smell like? It's just sweat. Like, it's just, just, just 
just sweat. Yeah, <laughs> just sweat. sweat. <laughs> Nothing else. That's all he does under there is sweat. <laughs> um, so it's fair to say you built a pretty strong relationship with that costume. Yeah. And my producers told me that you have a passion for building relationships in general. Yeah. You no, have to explain that. Just networking, uh, new people, new experiences. Um, just there's never not a time that you can't network. Okay. Are you willing to meet the girls from LaSalle after the show or no? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm just stressing. I mean, I'm in a black belt and a hot yoga. I mean, you never know what could happen from that. But anyway, <laughs> hey. I didn't mean where your mind might have went, but anyway. Um, anyway, so uh, I guess we should move on from that and building relationships and go to Brian. Uh, thanks, Tyler. All right. All right, Brian. So you're the team captain. You're also a part of our crew here as a game show producer. That's you have correct. your T TU TV shirt on. That's right. Um, you're all ready to go. Brian's a game show junkie. He has his own YouTube um, video series called Game Show. Go ahead. Game Show Junkie. And, and he also has his own radio show with his dad. Um, but Brian, so you're trying to be an internet sensation, but you also have a passion for close-up magic. Are you trying to join the two together and be an internet sensation, close-up magician? I was thinking about that for a little bit, but then I thought, um, you know, I looked at the angry video game nerd, how okay. he, his passion was video games, and it just exploded on, the, on uh, YouTube. Okay. And so I'm hoping that my uh, content is going to do the same thing. But if not, I can always use magic as a backup. Um, if you could perform in one venue across the country or world, what would you want to do? Where would you want to go? Oh, boy. Uh, probably one of the uh, casino showrooms in uh, Atlantic City. Old school, okay. Mm -hmm. A little like Don Rickles and old, old school comedians exactly. and stuff like that. Okay. I mean, yeah. obviously, uh, for a magician, the ultimate venue would be Las Vegas, but uh, I right. don't know if I'll make it that far. Before we move on, who's your favorite magician? David Copperfield. That was quick. Okay, cool. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Hands down. Appreciate it. Game two. So just like bowling, we've all done it. Each player will have up to two throws to knock down all ten pins. After both teams play, the team with the most pins wins 100 points. Simple as that. I got nothing else left to say. Let's do it. This guy is originally from Portland, Maine. Now he's right here in Philadelphia. You can see all his stuff at jrcrowleymusic.com. Take a look. Is it the second time we're tempted to dance into 90s cover bands as if it really hasn't been so long? Not so sure where I belong since I'm not the face that I put on this hat does a better job 
of keeping me disguised. Not that I really want to hide, but I mostly just come out at night looking for warning signs for cold, cold minds so that they can't make my third eye blind. Don't wanna put you in a bind. Go ahead, just leave me behind. It cycles by, where things will always turn out right. Getting caught up or lost in all. Translations of patience, it's blatant that I'm inspecting perceptions. I can't let it slide. We're grasping for an afterthought while switching misgivings again. Well, sometimes energy gets drained, put our best foot forward to sustain. But now the balance is off, and I'm not walking straight. Never had much of a plan. I think I've come to understand that I can't really know what'll happen anyway. And long after we've gone, yeah, this place will go on. The only thing that's constant is change And I can't pretend that I don't fear the end Which keeps causing me to say Getting caught up or lost in all Translations of patience, it's blatant that I'm inspecting perceptions. I can't let it slide, we're grasping for an afterthought while switching misgivings again. While switching misgivings again. While switching misgivings again. Not much has changed. LaSalle is still up by 100 points, 200 to 100 as we go into our third game. Let's we'll see what happens next. We are at our last game of the show. Thank you for being with us till now and through the end. It is a karaoke challenge. So that means before the game today, each team picked a song they want to sing. Each team member goes 20 seconds before passing the mic to the other team member. In the end, the audience will vote by applause and the winning team will get 200 points added to their score. Rachel's not here with us tonight, but we have, again, like last time, we have three other Temple Owls here and ready to go. So what we're gonna do is let them have the stage first. Temple, stand by me as your song, all yours. When the night has come And the land is dark And the moon is the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid No, I won't be afraid Just as long as you stand Stand by me Darling, darling, stand, stand by me. Oh, stand, stand by me. Stand, stand by me. If the sky that we look upon should tumble and fall, or the mountain should crumble to the sea. So darling, darling, stand by me.
Now we're going to hear Love Shack by the women of LaSalle University. Ladies, take it away. That's us 15 hours to Love Shack. Love Shack, yeah, yeah. I'm heading down the Atlanta highway, looking for the getaway, headed for the love getaway. I got me a car, it's as big as a whale, and we're headed on down to the Love Shack. <laughs> I got Chrysler, it seats about 20, so hurry up and bring your. Love Shack, baby Love Shack, Love Shack, baby Love Shack, Love Shack, baby Love Shack, Love Baby Nuts. Love Shack. All right, so it's pretty fair to say from what we saw today and the audience applause. We like the Love Shack, but I think that Stand By Me took that one. So, with 200 points, 200 points, Temple again takes the game. Thank you all for watching. They did it again. Congratulations to Temple. We'll see you next time.